Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will set up together an automatic backup system to your WordPress site and you will also learn how to make sure that the backup is successful. But before we dive into the technical process, I would like to take a minute and discuss the importance of backups. You must always, always keep a backup of your site in a secure location. Having a backup in place it's important not only as a security layer of dealing with hacking attempts. Having a backup in place is also important to protect you from yourself by making unnecessary changes, by making changes that will make your site go down, may break your site, and may also protect you from technical or other foreseen issues with your website or hosting provider. Think about it like keeping a backup of your most important work documents or your family pictures. You do keep a backup of those, right? When it comes to saving the backup copy of your website, it is crucial that you do not save it on your web server at your hosting account. You must always keep it in a remote location. Now, I'm aware that most hosting companies offer backup services as part of the hosting package where the backup copy is stored on the servers and I'm not saying that you should not use it. I simply say that you must have an extra layer of backup that is stored elsewhere. Otherwise, it's just like putting all the eggs in one basket. If you lose your hosting account, you will lose access to your backup copies as well. Therefore, the backup system that we will set up during this lecture is independent of any hosting provider or hosting platform. It is based on the managewp.com WordPress management suite and you can start using it for free. And if you require a more frequent backups, you can upgrade. We'll talk about frequency of backups in a minute. Another backup service that is worth mentioning is blogvault.com. It offers a great service, a great level of backup and migration to another site if needed. So let's talk for a minute about frequency of backups. And the required frequency of backup to your site heavily depends, of course, on the nature, on the type of the site. Now, this is only my recommendation based on my experience. You can always pick a higher level, a higher frequency uh, to have a better layer of protection, a better sense of protection to your website. So if your website is completely static and has low traffic, by static, I mean no comments, only uh, content that you display and it doesn't change very often, then you can definitely go with monthly or weekly backups. This will definitely do. If your WordPress site is actually a blog and it has a decent amount of traffic and comments, then you can choose to go with the weekly backup. That way, if something goes wrong, the worst case, you lost a few comments, uh, nothing more important than that. The higher frequencies, such as daily backups or even every few hours, are usually more appropriate to site with, that has daily changes, that has high load of traffic and comments, and even e-commerce sites where every change, every few hours, something changes at the website. So in this lecture, we will set up a monthly backup, which is completely free at managewp.com. And later on, you can choose whether per your needs, you will need to update to purchase an add-on for a more frequent backups. Let's get started. So the first thing you need in order to set up a backup system with managewp.com is of course to create your free account. Just head over to managewp.com, enter your email address at the appropriate box and click on sign up, then follow the email instruction to complete the registration. As I already have an account, I simply logged in to the management dashboard. And as you can see, I already have a handful of sites, a dozen or so, already added to my account. In order to add a new site to the service, in case you are not prompt automatically to do so, what you need to do is to click on the plus icon here at the top left corner. And now you are requested to enter the URL of your WordPress site, the address of your WordPress site. And you have a button that also says add credentials. As part of the setup process, you can enter the administrative account credentials here at the wizard and managewp.com will remotely install the plugin and activate it for you. 
Personally, I don't like to use that option. I prefer to install the plugin manually on my site rather than to provide the administrative credentials in this wizard. So let's do that right now. ManageWP.com plugin is called ManageWP Worker. And so if I will go to the admin dashboard of my WordPress site, to the plugin sections, and I will click on add new, and you're already familiar with this process, at this search box, I will simply type manage WP worker. And this is the first result that shows up. So all we have to do now is to click on install and then on activate. And now we are ready to add this site to managewp.com management service. So I will simply copy the address and I will paste it here to continue this app. And now when I click enter credentials, the system has been automatically detected that I already have the plugin installed and the site has been added to my system. All I have to do is to click on done. Make sure that the current site is selected. In my case, internetmarketerslaunch.com. And then click on the backup section. And as I've said earlier in this lecture, the basic backup, the monthly backup is free. And all you have to do right now is to click on activate backups. You will be given a choice to stick with the free backup or to upgrade. I'm going to stick with the free backup for the purpose of this lecture and click activate. ManageWP.com backups are stored on AWS, Amazon Web Services Storage. And you can choose whether you would like to store your backup copy in United States or in Europe. That may become handy if you have personal information of subscribers on your website and you are bound to some regulation, you may prefer keeping the backup copy of your website in a specific region. I will stick with United States with the purpose of this lecture. And you can also choose whether you would like to include or exclude specific content such as files or the database from the backup. I highly recommend that you will not exclude anything. So all you need to do is simply to click on activate. And now you see a message saying that backup is activated. I will close this message. And what happens now is that managewp.com already runs the first backup for our website. You just need to wait for a few minutes, maybe more if your website has a large amount of data. You just need to wait for the status to appear that the first backup has been successfully completed. And while we wait for the first backup to complete, you can take a look at the settings for your backup. So the setting is set for a monthly free backup. And the start time is 27 minutes after 12 in the middle of the day, in the noon. And it will, it will back up on the 23rd. Now, of course, you can change that, but you cannot reduce the frequency to less than once a month with a free backup. And as soon as the first backup is completed, you will see that, first of all, you have a snapshot of your website, a snapshot of the homepage already appeared in the management dashboard. And you have the title says initial backup here. And that means that the backup is indeed successfully completed. Now, backups without testing the backups don't really worth anything. So let's go and break something on our website. Let's delete some content. And then we will try to restore it using the backup we've just created. So I'm logged in to the site and I will go to the post page. I will delete it. I will also empty the trash. So you will actually see that the content is restored. And now just to verify how that looks on the front end, if I will visit the site, you will see that there is nothing really here. There's no content to display. So I will switch back to the manage WP console and I will hit restore. And now I get a notice asking me to confirm that I really like to restore my website to this specific snapshot. I will click restore and I will let the restore process do its magic. As you can see, there is a progress bar. And of course, it may take a little longer on your site if your site contains more data. And as soon as we have the website restore successfully message, it's time to go back to our website and refresh the page. And as you can see, the post has been successfully restored. And if I will switch back to the back end of the website, the post 
is here once again. So we have successfully set up a backup system to our WordPress site, and we've also tested the backup, and we've made sure that we can restore from the backup copy we have just created. And to remind you, this backup is not stored on your web server, it's stored on Amazon Web Services servers, so it's completely independent. Even if you will lose your a hosting account, if you will lose your server, you still have a way of restoring your website to a different location. One last thing about frequency of backups, if I will switch to the settings tab, here is where you can choose to upgrade your plan. You can use this scroll bar to change to a weekly or daily frequency, depending on your needs. And here you see the price for the monthly price for the change. Okay, so if I will click on weekly, it's two dollars per month. The same goes for daily. Every 12 hours costs a little bit more. It's 250 per month. Every six hours costs three dollars per month. And real time, which means that constantly backing up your site costs six dollars per month. Personally, on my most critical sites, I go with the daily plan because I don't have e-commerce on my on my site. And I do like the peace of mind that I have a daily snapshot on of, of my website stored in a secure location, which is not my web hosting account. It's up to you to decide if this setting suits your needs as well. You can, of course, choose to keep the free monthly backup, but I strongly suggest that if you care about your website, at least upgrade to the weekly plan. It will go a long way in saving your website, saving data in case you have any problem in the future. And that brings this lecture to an end. In the next lecture, we will talk about plugins and themes, how they can put your site at risk, and how you can avoid it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next lecture.